My name is Teresa Ellingson, and I teach algebra and geometry to eighth grade students at Johnson Middle School in Irving ISD. Currently, I'm on maternity leave and therefore filming this video from home and won't be able to walk through our classroom live, but I'll be able to show you our current layout through videos and pictures and links to our current YouTube channel. Howdy, welcome to my home office. I want to tell you a little bit about how our students learn differently. Last year, I changed how my students learn because we were not being successful with only 45 minutes of class per day. During the second semester, we flipped our classroom by switching which tasks will perform at school versus at home. In our flipped classroom, the assignments traditionally completed as homework were now completed at school individually or in small groups and with the assistance of their teacher, while traditional lectures and notes were completed by video at home. This model allowed more time for students to practice problems with assistance and without the often heard phrase at home from parents of, I don't remember how to do that math, or that's not how we did it in school. Parents also benefited from seeing the lesson firsthand on the videos with their student so that their child couldn't tell them, oh, I don't remember, or she didn't teach us that, or that's not what the teacher said. Students benefit from the videos by being able to go at their own pace and rewind and rewatch as many times as they need without the fear of asking questions in front of their peers. And no longer is the classroom lecture too fast for some but who are getting bored and lost or too slow for others who really want to move on and have already mastered this. Students um, in our flipped classroom do require the use of technology. To fulfill this need for students who may not have had technology at home or had technology but not internet access, I was able to purchase with a district grant nine iPod touches and an iPad that students can use before, during, and after school, or they can also bring their own devices to class. This made sure that even if a student wasn't able to watch the videos at home, they could still be able to get access to the videos at school, and maybe they were still flipping by watching the videos before school and then coming to class, or I did have some students who would watch the videos in class and still do their homework at home. This allows flexibility to meet the needs of all students, regardless of their home life structure. Students access our classroom videos from our website that you can see here. Another way that my students learn differently is by putting them in the driver's seat of their education and progress with several procedures implemented in the classroom and through this website. The first, my middle school students are provided with a syllabus each six weeks outlining all assignments, assessments, projects, and due dates for that six weeks, similar to what they would receive in college. This allows my students to plan ahead or even work ahead if they demonstrate mastery on earlier lessons. Second, my students do not receive a grade for their homework assignments, as these assignments are completed in class with the answer key available. Students work several problems and then check their answers to assure they are practicing the skill correctly. This process prevents students from completing lengthy assignments incorrectly, as well as shortens the assignments mastered early in the task. Students benefit from this in that their grades are not adversely affected when they are learning a new skill, as well as having continuous ongoing assessment of their learning progress. To assess their mastery of the practice skill, students take a short quiz the following day based upon the assignment they've already practiced. The next way that my students learn differently is that we utilize gradecam.com with an iPad or webcam to scan our quizzes and exams and receive instant feedback on what is missed and their score. Students no longer are waiting days or weeks for a teacher to grade their assignments and get them back to them with any feedback so that they can correct their errors. Students are now able to immediately correct their knowledge and their skills to demonstrate further mastery of the concept. Last year, my classroom was quite large with lots of space to move around and easily change groupings and store supplies. However, this year my classroom is smaller, although brighter, with the large windows and holds desks for up to 24 students with the possibility of more. Or that's at least what I thought at the beginning of the summer, before the students moved in. Now with the students here, we have over 30 desks, student desks for 30 students and looking for more. The room is crowded with little space to move about, and our desks have advantages as well as disadvantages. The desks currently allow for small groups up to four to push together, but with the chairs unattached, moving them around is quite time consuming. Also, due to the triangular shape of the desk, they may only be put together in specific ways, lacking flexibility. In addition, when grouped in sets of four, the desks leave a hole in the middle, which allows for supplies to fall to the floor or trash or whatever else a middle school student might place on their desk. 
However, placing these desks in individual spaces for assessment is difficult due to space. In addition, this year students are allowed to carry bags to class, but we have nowhere to store them, creating additional items for which students or teachers may trip over. With the Flip This Classroom contest from BKM Total Office of Texas, I would like to replace our desks and chairs with the furniture layout option A. This layout will improve our classroom learning by allowing us to go in and out of groups quickly with greater flexibility so that our precious 45 minutes per day can be spent focused on the math concepts rather than our surroundings. Layout A offers multiple flexible group options for students to work together or individually. This flexibility aligns to our flipped classroom needs in which students are not always working on the same task at the same time. The desk areas also allow me to gather a small group of students for additional instruction or remediation as may be needed. Layout A is very inviting and comfortable feeling which will hopefully allow my students to feel more at ease while learning what can sometimes be difficult math concepts and sometimes also fearful for students.